Coffee Chat Day 49. Sit down, grab yourself a coffee, enjoy the vibe. All right, so a few things I want to talk about, right? Uh, well, first of all, I caught up with all the Drake versus Kendrick beef. And my God, Kendrick. Like, what What happened? <laughs> like, oh, <coughs> it was, what the hell? Like, bro, he, he killed Drake. He, he just, he killed Drake. Like, seriously, meet, meet the Grams? Like, he, he just killed Drake. Hold on, fixing up that camera a bit. He just, oh, oh my god. Like, that was brutal. I was talking to a friend about that, and like, neither of us knew about that drama, but I talked about, like, how I listened to it earlier. And even he was like, yo, what the hell? Like, he was just as, like... Like this, as I was, and it was just, oh. All right, so that out of the way, uh, I went to church today uh, for the first time this week. Uh, last time I went was Sunday. Oh. So yeah, last time I went to church was last Sunday. And yeah, I'm pretty happy I went today. Uh, I found that right before mass starts praying the jesus prayer is like really good like i'm just kneeling down at the pews i'm like being very reverent of like the lord like i know i'm in his house so you know i just i just keep saying the jesus prayer over and over and over and then when the mass like eventually did start like it was just it was good it was good I really felt like I was very connected to the teachings that were taking place and I was very like, you know, I was just taken aback because we live in a world where God came down to us as man and suffered for us. And I mean like, I would consider all the stuff that Jesus went through from like when he got arrested to till he died on the crucifix as being the closest thing any human has ever like the closest that any human has come to being in hell like that is the closest thing to hell on earth what Jesus went through and that really adds like a whole different meaning to he took the punishment that we were meant to because, like, I used to think that hell was just, like, blank. Like, I used to think hell was what people thought death was. Like, atheists thought death was. But, like, now I feel like I have this whole different understanding of, like, hell is a lot more brutal than that. Like, I used to think it was just a quiet longing for something that just got worse and worse over the eons and like over eternity but now that I'm thinking about it it is like a lot darker than that and you know that really like it just gives me a lot of reverence towards Jesus Christ himself because of like well more reverence than I already had but just knowing that he went through the closest thing to hell that a human can suffer through because he just loved us that much like he loved every single one of us that much that he would take that punishment for us that is like I don't know like Christ is king Christ is king I feel like the death of Jesus is very, uh, it's very understated in a way. Like, when people hear about, oh yeah, Jesus was crucified, it's almost like just that, right? Like, just a casual bit of information. But like, man, it, it was not that. 
it was not just Jesus was crucified. It was, he was beaten, whipped, and like, the whips that they used to whip him were like, these special kinds of whips, where like, they had animal bones at the end, like sharp animal bones. And like, every time he would get hit by one, it would like, dig into his skin, like, dig deep into the muscle and like rip that out of like his body and it's like each whip had nine tails like they were nine tail whips and there were two like roman soldiers doing that to him so it was gonna hurt right and yeah two roman soldiers beating him and then like they mocked him like dressed him up as a king put the crown of thorns on his head which yeah, again, that's, like, another thing, like, thorns digging into your scalp and, like, your forehead. Probably not the most pleasant experience. They mocked him, calling him the king of the Jews after, like, dressing him up as a king and putting that crown on his head. Stripped him of that. And then spat in his face. And then made him carry, like, this big cross like this big wooden cross i don't know how heavy the cross would be but i can't imagine it was light and he had to carry that up a mountain while his muscles were like visible to the air and like they, like his forehead like the thorns digging in like and then the actual process of crucifix like, crucifixion is very, very painful. Like, I want you to imagine right now someone... Like, I just want you to touch your wrist, right? You can probably feel, like, how sensitive it is to touch. I want you to imagine a six-inch nail being hammered through that. And it's like... That's on both wrists, and then through the ankles. And then... For six hours, according to the Gospel of Mark, that's like the rough approximate time period. For six hours, every breath that he took would have been shifting weight from either the nail in his ankle to the or the nails in his wrists. And with each inhale and exhale, it's like more pressure is being put on it. It's like hurting more and more with every breath and how many times would you breathe in six hours like give me a rough idea of that like I want you to just think about that how many times would you breathe in six hours and keep in mind when you're crucified your heart beats like pumping more so you're breathing more and every breath is like a struggle and not only that, but with like the shifting of your body, all those open wounds on his back exposing muscle to air, they are being scraped across like splintery wood. And it's like, he went through that. He didn't have to. Like he was fully God too. He could have called down like a legion, a legion of angels and just stopped that. But he went through that. He took that punishment for us. And then he got resurrected. Well, he resurrected. And... Yeah, to think all of that happened to... The one person on this earth that was truly... Innocent. That was truly good. That was completely free of sin. Is... It's brutal, right? So Christ is king. And like, you know, I was going to make a whole different video. Like, a video for God. That was like the name of the title. But I just really wanted to get that off my chest. Just because I have, like, I've been thinking about that. Like, I thought about that when I left church. And, yeah. He loved us that much.
Anyway, uh, I I feel like I should lighten up the topics, but you know, like just. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. Doing the hair tutorial after this. As you can see, like my hair is a bit clapped right now, but I'm just gonna start the recording, just gonna say like what it is I use, and then I'm gonna show, like, I'm gonna cut to like me in the bathroom showing like exactly how I put the products I put in my hair in, and then just gonna have to wait for like three hours until it's all dry because I let it air dry. I mean, I'm going to be going through all of this in the actual video should be coming out like relatively soon. Might not be out today. Like I just want to make that clear. Might not be out today, but should be out tomorrow. Also, I don't think I talked about this, but I got a new PR on bench that I'm pretty happy with. I'm now officially benching 85 for two. And that is like crazy to think about because I'm nearly at like, I'm nearly benching one and a half times my body weight now. And that's like pretty sick. For only like, a year and three months of training, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. There's that sort of like arrogant part of me that's like, oh yeah, I could definitely like bench 90 now. And realistically, I'm pretty sure I can. And that is like, that's going to be fun. Once I get to bench in 90, that's going to be fun. But that's like every 10 kilos, I feel like for me, every 10 kilos on bench is sort of like another wall that needs to get broken down. Like it's never easy to just bench like 10 kilos heavier. Like every 10 kilo mark is like... I am usually stuck at that for like at least a month and then I actually start like getting more and more weight in that 10 kilo like range but yeah it's cool to think that like I'm nearly done with the 80 now and I'm gonna be moving on to 90 and then after that that's when I'm start when that's when I'm gonna be hitting two plates and I know for like most people that don't go to the gym, two plates doesn't really seem like that much. Well, not that it doesn't seem like that much, but it doesn't really mean anything. Like, benching 100 kilos doesn't really mean that much if you don't know, like, just how heavy that is. Uh, like, you know, it's... Like, obviously not everyone's gonna, like, have that reference of, like, oh, yeah, you need to be, like, pretty strong to bench 100. But, like, there are statistics on it. I think it's only, like, 0.2% of the population that can actually bench 100. Or, like, maybe 2%. So, like, either way, I'm getting into that, like, sort of higher percentage, and I'm very excited about that. I've been having like so many ideas for like poems recently. Like I've been getting into this sort of habit about 
writing poetry where it's like, since I also started like drawing again, I sort of have this idea for like, I want most of the poems that I write to be in like the context of a drawing and like a little guitar riff to go with it. And like, I really want to start releasing that sort of stuff. Because I think it would just be cool to have like that multiple like artistic vision sort of going on. I've actually been thinking about like applying for a job at a local coffee chain just because I feel like that could be just a fun thing to do. Like, I know I've talked about how I'm only like a few, well, a few thousand hours of watch time away from like actually being able to put ads on my YouTube videos. But I was just thinking about it earlier. I don't know if I actually want to do that because I feel like, you know, I feel like there's a little bit, I feel like that's just cheap. Like, I feel like that's not what this channel is about. I feel like there's more to this channel than just making money. But that being said, uh, there is that book I want to write. And alongside that, I sort of want to make like a poetry collection. And I might even get on Twitter and just like start doing art commissions and stuff. I mean, that's only, like, when my skill really gets to that point. I really want to start doing that. And, yeah, like, hopefully all of that will sort of come together to create, like, this very, like, I don't know how to describe it, but hopefully it will all come together to really help my identity as a person just expand into something more. Because I want to be like artistic as a person. Like I don't want to be like this. Like I don't want to be non-artistic, I suppose. Like I want to actually make stuff and like make stuff that I think is beautiful and like hopefully other people also find it beautiful and all and then just put that out into the world and just be like here you go here's here's like a little extra something for the world to have coffee's done all right I do feel like that video got a bit deep with like all the Jesus talk, but I just had to get that off my chest. So yeah, uh, that's everything I have to say today. Uh, thank you for watching and keep running when no one else is.